So you want to buy a new smartphone. You have your money, but there's so many options out there and you just can't decide. Well, you've come to the right place. When it comes to choosing the best smartphone, there are a few key factors to consider. But the first step is to identify your specific needs. What do you primarily use your phone for? Is it for photography, for gaming, productivity or social media? Understanding your requirements will help you narrow down the options. The first factor to consider is the display. This plays a crucial role in your smartphone experience. Within the display, there are five things you need to consider. The display size, type, resolution, refresh rate, and protection. For a more immersive experience, go for a bigger display if you enjoy gaming, watching movies, playing videos, or multitasking. If you prioritize portability and mainly use your phone for things like texting, a smaller display might be better. In terms of the display type, I'm not going to go into many details. Choose AMOLED over LCD, as it offers vibrant colors, deeper blacks, consumes less battery, and overall looks better. Now, the higher the resolution, the more the pixels on the screen, hence the sharper the visuals. Don't pick anything less than 1080p, it's 2023. 720p resolution is updated. So 1080p, 2K, 4K, going up. Now let's talk about the screen refresh rate. This refers to how many times the display refreshes its image per second. A higher refresh rate translates to smooth animations, scrolling, and overall fluidity. Look for higher rates like 90Hz, 120Hz, or 144Hz for a more fluid experience depending on your budget. Lastly, with display protection, check if the phone has any type. This will protect your smartphone screen from accidental drops and scratches. Next up is the camera. Nowadays, your smartphone is your primary camera, so it's essential to choose a device with a capable camera system. But you need to remember a few key points. Megapixel aren't everything. Don't be swayed by high numbers alone. And 2 megapixel depth and macro lenses on budget phones are all gimmicks. Avoid them too. Also, check things like aperture size. Basically, the lower the number means the wider the lens opening, hence a better camera. We should also look for things like optical image stabilization to make things easier. On YouTube, you can check for camera reviews and comparisons on creators you trust. And make sure you trust the creator. Because some people just post videos pretending it's a camera comparison and they don't even have the actual phones. Also, there's this website called DxOMAC that puts smartphone cameras through tests and ranks them and it's pretty reliable, you can go and check them too. Another important thing to consider when choosing a smartphone is its processing power and performance. To determine this, you should look at the chipset of the phone. A higher-end chipset will give you better performance and smoother multitasking. Some people may claim that Snapdragon chipsets are better than MediaTek chipsets, but that's not true. A simple Google search won't hurt. If you're a power user who enjoys playing demanding games, then you should opt for a smartphone with a high-end processor. For Snapdragon chipsets, you can look for the Snapdragon 8 series or 7 series, while for MediaTek, the Dimensity series is a good choice. On the other hand, if you are a casual user and you don't require the most powerful chipset, you can skip the high-end options. In any case, it's a good idea to look up the specific chipset of the phone that you are interested in buying. This will help you determine what the phone is capable of and what it cannot do. Also, for performance, it's 2023 have a minimum of 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. That way, you'll have enough space for your videos, photos, and apps. Software updates are crucial for keeping your smartphone secure and up-to-date with the latest features. So, you look for smartphone brands that consistently deliver updates. With Samsung, Google, OnePlus, you'll be assured of at least 2 or 3 years of software updates. Some brands are a bit lazy when it comes to updates, so you can avoid them if you like updates. Also, High-end phones are more likely to have software updates than cheaper phones. Moving on to battery, everyone needs a phone with a great battery life. Now phones come with varying battery sizes, but just because a phone has a larger battery size doesn't mean it will last longer. Other factors come into play, like having a larger display and a faster refresh rate will obviously use more power. But then again, do not buy a phone with a lower battery size, go for at least 4500 mAh, especially for budget phones. For flagships like the iPhones and the Galaxy S23 with its 3900 mAh, it's still okay since they have the best processors in the market which are more efficient in preserving battery life. Now battery goes hand in hand with charging and obviously you'd want a faster charger. Don't go for less than 25 watt charging speeds. Again, it's 2023. No one wants to have their phone charging for a whole two hours. The user interface is the software layer that allows you to interact with your smartphone. With iPhone, we have iOS. Simple. With Android, we have several different user interfaces depending on the brand. Consider whether you prefer a stock Android experience 
or a customized user interface like Samsung's One UI or Xiaomi's MIUI. Most people want a clean, boring interface, no complications, no ads, just the basic essential things. Google, Nokia, Motorola, Asus, Nothing and Sony all offer this. Just clean and simple stock Android. If you want extra features that are better in my opinion with extra customization, Samsung's One UI or OnePlus Oxygen OS are the best. But we have Xiaomi's MIUI, Oppo's Color OS, Realme UI, Techno's High OS and many more. These ones offer great extra features but you may find ads and bloatware here and there. I'm not saying they are bad but just pick what works best for you. When choosing a smartphone, it's essential to consider its network and connectivity options. Make sure your chosen device is compatible with the network bands in your area. Look for features like 4G or 5G connectivity, Bluetooth versions and NFC support. With the USB port, do not buy a micro USB phone. Always go for Type-C. It's faster and it's better. Finally, we have the budget. There are three categories of smartphones with regards to pricing. Flagships, mid-range and entry level. Determine how much you are willing to spend and look for devices that offer the best combination of features within your price range. One important thing that you need to note is that you should keep an open mind. For example, some people have this notion that Samsung is the best brand. So no matter what amount of money they have, they will always go for a Samsung phone. And that's the worst mentality when trying to buy a phone. There is no best phone company. All phone companies have amazing phones and have terrible phones. You set your budget, do research on all phones for that price, and then compare them side by side until you find the one that is best for you. Do not buy an overpriced phone just because your favorite influencer promoted it. Anyways, that's all for today. I'm Milan and this is Fuzitech. Subscribe, like, and share. Hope you have an amazing day. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. I gave you for your warning. Beware. Beware.